Welcome to the world of Bartokoi, where a transfer student gets involved in the school's nearly falling apart baseball team. The story starts where Toshio Kanada joins the Yakusha Baseball Club after transferring to that school. He then meets Ichiro Masaru, the battering catcher for the team respectively, as well as their coach Genji Tadano. They then go on a trip to a campsite to practice baseball before Toshio wakes up in the middle of the night and... That's a wank? I'm sorry, who wrote this script? Okay, this is disgusting. I'm sorry, but isn't this in a high school? Isn't Toshio a high school student? You gotta be fucking kidding me. So, Bachakoi, a story about a high school's failing baseball club in the forms of a boys love visual novel game. I'm deeply concerned. Let's just go over the timeline before I start throwing chairs. The game starts after Toshi Kanada transfers to Yakusha Academy. He explains in his homeroom class that he is going to Yakusha not only because it's an awesome school for athletes, but his transfer is mainly because his parents moved nearby. Toshi then finds a poster in the main hallway which is an advertisement for the school's baseball club. After being nearly clobbered in the head by a baseball, Toshi meets the team's captain, Masaru. He then introduces Toshi to Ichiru, the batter, and Genji, the coach. Ichiro and Masaru mention how the club is starting to fall apart, since kids would rather play in teams at other schools since Akusha hasn't won a single tournament yet. Toshi points out that he's always thought the school's club is lively, but Masaru mentions that it's only because other schools practice in their field due to its size. One week later, Toshi arrives at the club, only to discover that he has to supply his own uniform. This is where the player can choose to wear either Ichiro's or Masaru's clothes, wear his current clothes, or no clothes at all. No matter what you pick, you're wearing a uniform. Depending on your option is how the story progresses. Expect a lot of these split path choices. After training, it's time to either go get changed or wait until you get home. No matter the option, you're met with a sexually suggestive CG of either Ichiro or Masaru. Fast forward a couple days and Ichiro is wagging class again. During the day, some rich lady by the name of Princess Tomika storms into the classroom and demands to know where Ichiro is. Toshu says that he doesn't know where he is and Tomika cries and leaves. After training, Toshu, Ichiro, and Masaru, if you pick the right option, end up going to have dinner at KFC. Oh wait, no, that's a copyright infringement. Uh, they end up going to have dinner at- FUCK! The next day, Masaru tells Ichiro and Toshu that training is cancelled because Genji has a private tutoring session for one of his preschool students, before then telling them that there's an upcoming field trip. Several more days later and the field trip commences. After two intense training sessions, you then go to sleep. Now this game runs off a point system to keep track of what route you're on. If you actually gained enough points in this game, you'll end up waking up in the middle of the night and having that wank I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The next day is a hiking trip. Now you can choose who to go with for this trip and you'll get the complete opposite of that choice. Once you're in the middle of the woods with said person, you'll then be told that they saw you wanking in the middle of the night. Oh, the embarrassment! It's so embarrassing to Toshu that he ends up having sex with them? Okay. Now again, depending on who you're with, you'll end up having to find Masaru or be found with Masaru. The next day, Genji treats everyone to a hot spring. The boys end up stripping down and jumping in. Again, the player can choose to either spend time with Ichiro or Masaru. Once again, if you spend time with them, you're greeted with another sex scene. The camp ends and then you speak to the person whose path you're on. Now, three weeks later, exams concluded. Ichiro and Toshiru pass, with Ichiro as a higher score despite wagging his classes. The boys then discover that Masaru was not on the list and that was because Masaru had failed his exams. While in the middle of talking about his exam, Masaru's youngest brother, Soma, runs up to him. He tells Masaru that he tripped, but Ichiru knows there's purple marks instead of red cuts. This means that Soma's being bullied. Before Soma leaves, he tells Masaru that Genji is looking for him. After the class gets dismissed due to a faculty meeting, Toshio and Ichiru go to the field and ask Genji where Masaru went. Genji says that he received a letter from the principal, stating that Masaru will not be allowed to attend any clubs due to his failed exams, including the baseball club. This is bad news for the club, as if Masaru leaves, his scholarship to Yakushi Academy is terminated. Fortunately, Genji organised a makeup exam, and if Masaru passes, he will not be removed. On a separate route, Genji receives a note from President Yanai, Ichiro's father, stating that the baseball club is not a good influence on Ichiro as he believes that, alongside consecutive losses, the club promotes laziness and irresponsibility. Genji promised President Yanai that the club will win this year's tournament. If they do, Ichiro remains a part of the club. Anyways, several days later and it's now Toshu's birthday. Again, depending on the route, either Ichiro or Masaru arrive at Toshu's house and have sweet, passionate birthday sex with him. Unless you happen to be on Masaru's route, in which case he then suddenly ends up at FUCK before having that birthday sex. 
Bad news arrives on Ichiru's route. Remember that Tomika bitch? Yeah, there's an arranged marriage between her and Ichiru. Apparently the transfer was finalised and that Ichiru will be leaving. Ichiru doesn't want to go with Tomika, in fact he wants to stay with Toshu. After having some casual sex in the classroom and talking to Soma about sticking up for himself, the tournament finally arrives with some good news and bad news. Good news? Yakushiro Academy wins. If you pick Ichiru, he kisses you. If you pick Masteru, you kiss him. Bad news, the person you didn't pick leaves Yakushiro Academy and the team is disbanded. Unless you chose a variety of choices, in which case both people leave and the team is disbanded. Either way, no more baseball club. If you successfully locked yourself into a route, you end the game having sex with them. And that's the story with Bachikoi. Before I start cracking down on how perverted this is, I'll also briefly cover the expansion pack that came with it. It's literally a whole ass fuckfest. I kid you not, this expansion pack only tells you what happens when you don't pick that path in the game. Say for example, you go with Ichiru at the hot spring. The game will tell you the interaction that happens between Genji and Masaru. Literally every scene is a sex scene. I kid you not, it's all a bunch of sex scenes. Most of these scenes are with Genji. Some of them are loose cannonballs, or well, testicles, as a threesome with everyone but Genji, and an interaction in the change room between Ichiru and Toshu. The last scene that happens in the game is a foursome between the lot of them. This is not how you should celebrate a victory! I stress so much about the themes of these games. BL is short for Boys Love, which is an alternative title for Yaoi content. This type of content features homoerotic relationships between male characters. This is typically created by women for women, and is distinct from Bara, a genre of homoerotic media directed towards gay men. Yaoi can attract male audiences and can also be produced by men. Homoerotic, by definition, means of relating to or tending to aroused sexual desire for a person of the same sex. I honestly don't care about whether or not I see boys love content. However, Bachikoi and the expansion pack is explicit and should not even be allowed. Literally, this game incites child pornography. Take a look at these characters and guess how old they are. If you said that they are younger than 18, you are severely incorrect. Upon opening this game, you are greeted by a message that reads the following. All characters portrayed in this game are above 18 years of age. I am well and truly aware that people can be over the age of 18 and look like they aren't. I don't have an issue with that in the slightest. The issue with this is that it's based in a school. I don't know if you know this, but school is a place where children go to learn. And I don't know if you know this as well, but children are legally classified as people under the age of 18. This is a pornographic game, which shows human genitalia and sexual interaction, such as intercourse. When I look at the laws for an analysis such as this, I tend to look at both the Australian law and the law of the country it originates in. I'm not typically aware of where this originates, so I'm going to assume it's the United States. First, we'll start with Australia. Pornography is only legal if anyone containing the medium that is exposing themselves are consenting to the activity, are not under the influence of alcohol or any other drugs, and are at least the age of 18. Anyone under the age of 18 is classified as a child, and child pornography is essentially pornographic content but the person is under 18. The creation, possession, and distribution of child pornography is illegal regardless of if the characters portrayed are fictional or real. In the United States, however, pornography is, again, legal if it meets the criteria previously mentioned. However, despite being cited on Wikipedia as among the harshest in the world, fictional child pornography is legal. Fictional child pornography is protected under the First Amendment of the United States of America under freedom of expression. However, fictional child porn is only considered legal if the content is not obscene. Obscene, by definition from Oxford languages, is offensive or disgusting by accepted standards of morality and decency. There is no definition to the word obscene, so it can be interpreted in any way in a court of law. Another thing is that a requirement for media is the assessment and certification of a classification rating. In Australia, media of all kind follow the standard classification rating system, composing of five ratings. G ratings are for general audiences. This type of content is primarily targeted towards children in primary schools, such as shows like Shaun the Sheep. PG stands for parental guidance. This means that it's recommended to watch this with a parent if you're under the age of 15 years. Dragon Ball Super, rest in peace Akira Toriyama, is an example of a PG show. I know this because it appears on ABC every morning after their parental guidance message plays. The Department of Education, in Western Australia at least, requires that before watching PG rated programs, the school receives permission from a parent guardian. 
M ratings are for mature audiences. Programs with this rating typically only have it for cartoon violence, but can also have this rating from other features such as coarse language and depression. It is not recommended that children under 15 access material with this rating, but it is not enforced as it's an advisory rating. Avengers Endgame has an M rating due to violence. MA15 plus ratings are, is the first of restricted ratings. This is again for mature audiences, but now companies cannot legally sell a product with an MA rating to a child under the age of 15. The Future Diary, also known in Japan as Mirai Nihi, is considered an MA program due to its violence, bloodshed, coarse language and mild nudity. R18 and plus ratings are now restricted to adults. This is mainly due to an increase in sexual activity. Game of Thrones is an example of an R18 film, as it features lots of violence, bloodshed, deaths, and our favourite topic of all, sex. There are also two other ratings usually issued. A CTC rating means check the classification, meaning that it has not yet been assessed. An X18 plus rating can be awarded to movies that include several inappropriate themes such as high amounts of exposed sex scenes, drug use, violence, and more. Fritz the Cats was actually awarded an R18 plus rating in Australia, but did become the first film to receive the X rating in the United States. Typically, anything with an X rating is technically classified as porn. Throughout all of this, it is only legal to sell games and movies if it has been awarded a classification rating. There are chances that media can be refused a classification rating, which would make it illegal to sell, hire, advertise, or even legally import into Australia. Media can be refused classification based on several factors. These include describing or depicting sex, drug misuse or addiction, crime, cruelty, violence or revolting or abhorrent phenomena in such a way that offends the standards of morality, decency and propriety generally accepted by reasonable adults, promotes, incites or instructs in matters of crime or violence, advocates terrorist acts and the most important one for all of these games, Describes or depicts a minor who is or appears to be under 18 in a way likely to offend a reasonable adult. This can include having adults depicted as school children. This is the most important thing when it comes to Bunch of Koi. This is centered around a school's baseball club. The fact that this is portraying children is abhorrent and should be refused. Yet Black Monkey Pro awarded the game an R18 rating. I kid you not, they use the Australian classification rating. Now, with pornography laws, you can only have people over the age of 18 legally consent. This is where Black Monkey Pro screwed up big time. How many you ask? Toshu's birthday scene. Midway through the game, it is Toshu's birthday. We could have assumed that he turned 18 when this event happened. However, this happened after the camp. During the camp, we see the first scene where Toshu was busting his own nut and the first two sex scenes. Since this happened before his birthday, we have to assume that Toshu is already 18. This means that by the time his birthday rolls around, he turns 19. If this is based in a high school, then Toshu cannot legally attend Yakusha Academy as a student. In fact, during that year, Toshu should be graduating. It's even worse when we assume that Masaru is older than both Toshu and Ichiru, assuming that Masaru is around the age of 19 or even 20. However, these ages get even more confusing, and to understand that, we have to enter a darker chapter with its sequel. Camp Buddy. I don't know much about this game, and quite frankly I'd rather not. However, in order to completely understand what's happening, I have to delve into this game. Now, I have the game. I don't want to play the game considering it's a whole 5 gigabytes and that I only need the images for the sake of this video. This is the only time I'll praise the creators of this game since this is a 5 gigabyte game completely made in Renpy, which is the same engine used in most visual novel games, one of the most popular examples being Doki Doki Literature Club by Team Salvato. Luckily I was actually supplied PDF handbooks on both Camp Buddy and its Scoutmaster Season DLC which explains behind-the-scenes concepts and also the story of the game. Unfortunately, these two handbooks with over 200 pages were mostly filled with images, especially all the porn scenes. So I'll leave my regards to my friend Jade Spade. They've released a video with a similar theme to this. While I mainly cover Bacha Koi, Jade mainly covers Camp Buddy in her video. I'll leave a link in the description and have it linked on the end card. Anyways, we see two familiar faces in this game. Those faces belong to both Toshu Kanata and Ichiru Yanai. That's right, the same Toshu and Ichiru from Bacha Koi. These two only make a cameo appearance within Yoichi and Heroes Rats, and also appear in the background during the sports fest when Kitaro and Tiger are climbing the rope. There's also the one Halloween image with Toshu and Ichiru that not only haunts our dreams since the expansion pack, but also made its way into the intro and credits for Camp Buddy. 
great that they're actually reused these two characters for more than just a defunct porn game, but now they're putting them into a not so much defunct porn game. Now this is an unreliable source, but if you have a look on the fandom page for Camp Buddy, you'll see two whole pages for both Ichiru and Toshu. Clearly, this takes place after the Ichiru route in Bachakoi. However, you'll see one major information box on this website. Toshu and Ichiru, in the premise of Camp Buddy, are at the age of 17. If this happened after the events of Bachakoi, then we can assume that, if there was a direct connection between the two of them, and if the age is shown on the fandom are true, then Toshu transferred to Yakusha Academy and started the events of Bachakoi at the age of 16, which would make more sense than having him above the age of 18. Do I really need to delve into the characters? Well, this wouldn't be an analysis without doing so. Unlike Bachakoi, Camp Buddy has actual distinct ages for the characters. Kitaro was originally 18 when the game launched, however was changed to 19 in the full version with version 1.2. Hero is 19, Hunter is 18, Natsumi is 20, Tiger is 19, and Yoichi is 20, just to name a few. This time, these characters are in a summer camp and not out of high school. Most characters still do look like they're underage, which is still morally incorrect, but their aesthetics have been improved. The context of location does change how they're represented. Costuming, however... I cannot deal with their party costumes. Why? Just why? Honestly, I know that this is the boys love game. I know that the developers are trying to make people have obsessions with them, but this... This is overkill. I can't complain about how much of a fuckfest Camp Buddy is, but I can definitely complain about how horrid Butchakoi is. First of all, the school. It's based in a school. A school where children go to learn. Children cannot consent to porn. Porn is involved in this school. If it weren't for the fact that the game discloses that the character is above 18, this game would be entirely illegal. Secondly, Genji. Genji is a teacher at this school. In the Bachikoi expansion pack, the game is full of sex scenes with Genji. You see Genji and Ichiru, Genji and Masaru, Genji and Toshu, and a foursome with a lot of them. I wish I didn't even need to discuss about the secret gallery. In all three games, there's a secret gallery. Haven't discovered it within Camp Buddy, but in Bachikoi, you click on the school logo, and in the expansion pack, it's Genji's whistle. The expansion pack secret gallery is utterly perverted. You'll see photos of Genji having an orgy with some random others and having a baseball bat shoved up his ass. I'm not meant to just condemn these images. I'm here to condemn Genji for being an adult teacher fucking his students. In Australia, Consensual laws differ in most states. In Western Australia, the laws are all parties must be 16 and consent to it, unless one of them's in a position of power, such as a teacher, but they must be 18. With the opening clause, this is legal, but it's still utterly disgusting that you see Genji the pedophile fucking his students. Honestly, he should be locked up. No wonder Ichiru calls him Geiji. You wanna know what's also worse? Genji technically rapes Toshu and gets away with it. Toshu's birthday scene in the Bachikoi expansion pack tells you what would happen if Genji actually showed up to the, his house instead of Ichiru or Masaru. I wasn't able to pick this up easily as I have a decompiled version of the game. However, Jade actually sent me a few snippets of the actual scene. Toshu literally says stuff like, I'm not ready yet, and it hurts. For the last decade, this scene was legally protected under that one opening sentence, where all characters are over 18 and all sexual activity is consensual. This game is utter bullshit, and the fact that this hasn't been taken out off the internet is disgusting. The only reason you can't buy this game anymore is because Black Monkey Pro went defunct and had shut down everything, but people still own the files of the game. People own physical copies of the game, people even own copies of the handbooks and the spin-off book Home Run. In what life would it be morally acceptable to not only own this game, but to say that you were involved in the making of it? How can you think it's acceptable to have not only your name tied to this game, but your life dedicated to the making of this? In what way do you think it's acceptable to award your own game a rating to keep it on the shelves of the internet? This thing could be assessed by officials at the Australian Classification Board, and I guarantee you that they would not let this game go past. They would most definitely deny the expansion pack, and the original should also be denied because not only are adults being portrayed as school children, but because Genji is fucking his students! Oh my god, I really need to calm down. I think I'm gonna just end this here. 
all the pornographic images that I have not used, which if I did they were censored, have been deleted. I don't want to get into any legal scandals if this does indeed raise concerns by keeping these images on my computer. But to coin here, but you're definitely concerning. Games like these shouldn't exist, and developers should not create characters which look like they're underrated, especially if it's a porn game. Porn games are, even though it's not just disgusting anyway. At any point in time, your favourite characters could be fucking to their heart's content. Even characters which you wish were innocent as hell could have their balls covering the whole screen. I don't care if these types of games exist, let the stay at home wankers have their port. Just don't have characters and themes that raise concerns, because if this gets proven to contain child pornography, then the creators and anyone who owns it is in deep shit. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you made it to the end, congratulations. I know this was a massive video, but holy hell, I am glad it's done. As much as this video covered a concerning topic, I would still like it if you liked this video and subscribed to the channel. Go check out Jade's video as well in Camp Buddy. We work together to make our videos, and if it weren't for Jade, this video wouldn't be up right now. I do understand that people might be upset right now. This video did cover a bunch of heavy topics. I'm going to assume that I'm legally compelled to say this. There is support out there if you need it. I don't know the numbers for other countries, but if you're in Australia, we do have services that can help you. Lifeline is a 24-hour telephone crisis support service, providing help with suicide prevention, mental health, and emotional support. You can call them at 13 11 14. Beyond Blue is also there to help you. They help with depression, suicide, anxiety, and other mental health disorders. You can chat with a counsellor online at beyondblue.org.au, or you can call them at 1-800-22-4636. In an emergency situation, you should always call the emergency services at 000. Speech and hearing impairments can text 106 to get 000 services as well. If you're watching in the United States, emergency services are at 911. The United Kingdom is 999 and the European Union is at 112. I can't provide the emergency numbers for all countries, so make sure you're aware. Anyways, we're at the end of the video now. Before I leave, I do want to say a few things. Unless what you think is morally incorrect... <coughs> <coughs> But Chakoy, nothing is stupid. Always take the chance to do things, whether that be speaking out to someone for some help or telling someone you love them. Never feel like it's stupid to do so and never feel like it's stupid to ask back. It could be a line to one person, but it could be true to another. Man, I listened to too much music. That last line was from Something Stupid by Robbie Williams and Nicole Kidman. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, night, whatever the fuck time it is. Thank you and good night.